Hello, hello friends and enemies and welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be talking about Moral Oral Season 2 Episode 9, Holy Visage. We start this episode out with Oral's class on a field trip to a local Moralton History Museum. While Miss Skoltum is telling the class about the Dark Ages and the Crusades, Oral asks what the Crusades were all about, and she tells them that it was a holy war to retrieve the symbols of their religion. She tells them how symbols of their religion are precious and should not be discarded. She even mentions how it is the reason behind why it's a sin to throw away a Bible off a cliff or, or flush a cross down the toilet. And it is at this point where we get to see Oro get a look across his face that lets us know that this is the lesson that he's gonna misinterpret for the episode. I'd also like to note that at each stop in the museum there is one of these informational podiums but all of them just have the same one voice line recorded over and over, just saying, believe it or else, sort of reinforcing the set beliefs in Moralton. Miss Sculptum's face while she listens to the voice saying, believe it or else, leads me to believe that on some level she is actually self-aware, and this possibly contributes to her disillusionment of the world around her. Regardless, the class goes on to the gift shop and Oral ends up buying a very odd and spiky looking Jesus bobblehead. On the trip back, the class takes a public bus and Oral sits next to Dr. Chosenberg, a Jewish doctor from another town over. And they have a small conversation about how religious symbols are important. Dr. Chosenberg specifically mentioning his star David and how that's an important symbol of his faith. Oral notices that Mr. Frigarelli, the bus driver in this case, does not have a religious symbol on the bus and goes to place his bobblehead on the dashboard of the bus. This ends up causing an accident because it blocks his vision and the Jesus bobblehead ends up lodged in Dr. Chosenberg's abdominal region and he ends up passing out. By the way, I'm going to be saying doctor a lot this episode so just be prepared for that and shout out to whoever can accurately count how many times I said doctor. In the next scene, we see the townspeople of Moralton surrounding him in a prayer circle. We see that Dr. Chosenberg has not had his wounds medically treated at all. Instead, his wounds are now considered a holy religious miracle. All the people around him believe that it was a miracle and they're all praying to the holy image of their savior that has been made in the man's stomach region. Even Oral himself is praying to it when Dr. Chosenberg wakes up. Dr. Chosenberg, being a doctor, begs Dr. Potter's wheel to see reason and to treat his wounds. He even goes on to say that no medical credentials have any bearings upon so-called acts of God in response to Dr. Potter's wheel stating that he is the only one legally qualified to deem the wound on Dr. Chosenberg a miracle. This makes Dr. Potter's wheel ask Dr. Chosenberg what he does to make excuses when people die on them. And I mean, he is a fellow doctor after all, so he must have experience with patients dying on him. And Dr. Chosenberg, being the reasonable man he is, says that he takes full responsibility, which in all honesty is not actually very reasonable. I mean, doctors do all they can in their power to save people. So I think Dr. Chosenberg is being a bit hard on himself here, but I get the point behind it. It is that he doesn't blame the death of a patient on God. He knows that it was his actions that led to their death. And I think that this is why Dr. Potter's Wheel just makes a comment about Dr. Chosenberg's ego after hearing that. Because I think in his mind, he sees that statement as arrogance. He is most likely understanding that statement as Dr. Chosenberg saying that he believes that he is the one who holds the power of life and death in his hands. And as a doctor, that is true, but from Dr. Potter's wheel's faith-driven view, it's like he's comparing himself to God. Dr. Chosenberg goes on to tell Dr. Potter's wheel that he is going to need him to fix his wounds, before Oral chimes in telling him how he can't discard a holy image because it is a sin. In response to this, Dr. Chosenberg tells him how it hurts in a genuinely pained voice. Oral, it hurts. Oh. Well, and for a moment, Oro is about to say, oh well, maybe we should get it treated, before he is interrupted by Dr. Potter's wheel when he says that a little pain never hurt anyone. This goes back to Oro's kind nature and ability to see reason. Oro has lived in Moralton his whole life and has been indoctrinated into their society. 
where religion is always the top priority. So he is used to taking these lessons or morals to heart, like in this episode how Oral learns that holy images and symbols should not be disregarded, so he believes this wholeheartedly just like the rest of the town as they pray in front of the man's open wound. But Oro is reasonable and can see that the man is in excruciating pain and would help him if he could, but he is just a child and it goes against the religious values that have been instilled upon him. He has these moments where he comes to his senses about the reality of the situation in front of him, but he gets shut down quickly by the adults around him. Dr. Trosenberg angrily tells Dr. Potter's wheel that if you don't treat the wound, I will. And in response to that, Dr. Potter's wheel just gets Nurse Bendy to drug him so he passes out. In the following scene, we see a line of sick people praying to Dr. Chosenberg's wound, to which he is deeply disturbed by because he rightfully so thinks that he will catch their diseases. He says that these people need help after naming each disease that each person has and saying how he can help them. To which Oro says, but you are helping them by housing the symbol of their lord and ends that statement with a thanks and a thumbs up, just further showing us how at this moment Oro truly believes that this is the right course of action. One of the sick people pass out on the ground after kissing Dr. Chosenberg's open wound, and he calls her to police, and he ends up tearing off the badge of Officer Papermouth and using the thread of his uniform along with the pin from the badge to try and sew his wound shut. He almost does it too as well, before Nurse Bendy restrains his arm while Dr. Potter's wheel gets his other arm. The next day we have a similar situation where it seems that anyone who has a problem in town from serious illnesses to Clay's toenail fungus are lined up to pray to the wound on Dr. Chosenberg. While Oral is the gatekeeper so to speak, Dr. Chosenberg lying there weakly has a moment of hope when he sees a family of Jewish people but sadly they live in Moralton which means they can only be converted, so they don't help him at all and they just ignore what he says and continue to pray. Dr. Chosenberg's wound is clearly infected at this point and he flails in pain while describing his pain as falling off a building and being on fire before getting hit by a car. Dr. Potter's wheel has brought in Dr. Second Opinion, that is Joe's father if you guys don't remember the only other doctor in town, to tell him how Dr. Chosenberg has caught pretty much every disease of the people they were praying to his wound had. They are astonished by this, and Nurse Bendy says that they should take him out of the hospital before he infects everyone else. But then Oral claims that everyone will be healed with the divine wound. The doctors agree with him and go on to say that they have to find a way to cure him otherwise the image will leave with his body if he dies. Dr. Chosenberg once again tries to reason with the doctors telling them that he needs medicine right as a medical assistant brings in all the medicine that they have in the hospital into the room. Just to see Dr. Potter's wheel tell the medical staff that they should get rid of the medicine since it is not obsolete and goes on to pat Dr. Chosenberg's wound. The doctor and Nurse Bendy leave and just before Oral is about to leave, Dr. Chosenberg tells Oral that he is dying. Oral, I am dying and tries to explain to Oral that what the doctors are doing are not going to help him and how he needs Oral to push the medical tray over to him so he can get actual medicine. Oral sadly declines his request because it would be going against his faith. Out in the hallway, Oral asks Clay for some advice on what to do when something you want is good but also kind of bad. And to this, Clay gives him the advice to trick himself into thinking it's right or the good thing to do. And Oral rightfully calls out the hypocrisy in this statement and Clay just says that he likes to call it lying to yourself, which is on the spot for his character. He even mentions how it is one of the best survival tactics that he knows. This will make even more sense when we go over season 3 episode 11, Sacrifice. So Oral goes inside the hospital room to talk to Dr. Trosenberg and he says that maybe if he puts a Jesus statue near him it will help him. So he puts it on the tray along with the medicine and moves it closer to the doctor. In this moment, Dr. Tosenberg sees what Oral is trying to do and plays along, just to make sure that Oral doesn't feel guilty about what he is doing, and even tells Oral thank you as he leaves the room. Dr. Tosenberg then frantically tries to mix together some medicine, originally trying to use a piece of cloth to apply it, but when that fails, he uses the Star David to dip it into the medical cocktail and to blow bubbles out of it to make them land on top of his wound representing how his faith protects him and even led to his salvation. Going back to the beginning of the episode where he said he would never feel safe without a star David. The next day we see Clay has arrived early to get his toenail fungus healed 
and he presses it up against the now healed wound on Dr. Chosenberg's body and he complains how it's just a stupid normal wound now. Orwell states that how maybe the Jesus statue has helped him after all. Clay goes on to tell him that religious symbols made on purpose do not count, only accidental holy images can heal people. Clay then begins to look around for accidental holy images and then notices the medicine bottles on the tray are lined up to look like Jesus. And then he just grabs a foot fungus medicine off the tray and begins to apply it. After this, Oral states that Dr. Chosenberg must have accidentally arranged the bottles in that way and he gives a wink to the man to which Dr. Chosenberg responds back with a wink. And that's the end of this episode. I think this episode showed us how people can misinterpret things such as holy images as well as ignore the problems that come with them. We also got to see Oral using his reasoning to see that what those around him are saying is okay is actually not okay. Oral takes a step towards being his own person in this episode which I thought was really nice. Even with Dr. Chosenberg we got to see how some other faiths can be proven to be actually useful in the moral oral universe where it doesn't actually just revolve around Christianity. And we also got to learn how no one should just blindly follow faith especially without being critical of it. And I'd like to thank Nightingale Wednesday Nightmare for supporting me on Patreon. I'd like to thank Chungi for providing the music to these episodes. The link to his SoundCloud will be down in the description. And I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for supporting the channel. It means a lot to me. And as always, it's been a pleasure to know y'all, but now I gotta go.